Hey everybody, Ben here. I uh, just wanted to do another video real quick. Uh, I've got my friend Matt here in the basement with me. We just went out this morning to do some yard sailing and flea marketing and we were pretty successful. We found some cool stuff, but that's not what we're going to talk about in this video. In this video, uh, I asked him to bring over his Game & Watch collection because Matt's been collecting these Game & Watch devices and fixing them up. And so I thought I'd first show the Game & Watch that I have that he fixed up, then go through some of the ones that he fixed up and maybe we'd do a little bit of repair basic tutorial stuff just to show what these things are because they're so unique and collectible and, and neat so anyway this is a different kind of video for me so if you like these videos please hit the like button it really helps the channel be seen uh, leave a comment let me know what you think of game and watch devices do you own one are you collecting them uh, so on and so forth i might start picking some up myself and repairing them just because it's another sort of thing for me to collect uh, and of course subscribe if you're enjoying the content so uh, the channel can grow and we can uh, have more people watch. So anyway, that's it. Let's show off uh, first my uh, Game & Watch. All right, so first up I wanted to show this Popeye. This is a Game & Watch tabletop unit, and I believe it's from, I want to say like 1980 or 1982 or something like that. Since 83 or 84. Yeah, so uh, I'm the cameraman today. Matt, uh, my friend who's the big Game & Watch expert, he's gonna be my hands and uh, I'm gonna ask him some questions as we go. Anyway, this Popeye unit I bought off of OfferUp for a dollar and it only sort of worked when I got it. And hopefully you can see kind of the way it works and Matt, correct me as if I go wrong here. There's actually, you can see this screen right here, but actually light is going through the top right through this piece and that is illuminating the screen. And so it's actually creating like a weird backlight. Matt, why don't you play a little bit? So you can see it's uh, sort of like any other Game & Watch unit. <laughs> it's so cool, the little sounds. <laughs> this one is actually in pretty good cosmetic condition. It's still got a little bit of problems. When I uh, let Matt borrow it to fix it, it was like, barely operating. Matt, what was it like when I handed it to you and you put in batteries the first time? Uh, the unit just wouldn't turn on. Yeah. So this one didn't really take too much work to get up and running again. I think we'll show you the battery contacts in a minute. That's the biggest thing to look out for when you're looking at something like this. You want to look for simple signs of corrosion. Make sure that there's nothing that leaked in terms of the batteries that are in there. Here, we want to pull it up and open, just show the back where the batteries are. Sure. And this one takes D batteries. So, C batteries. Or, sorry, excuse me, C batteries. So I'll show you what I did here. The contacts are both bent, and you can also see some signs of corrosion on there. Yeah. The best thing to use to remove corrosion would be something like simple white vinegar. Um, just with a Q-tip, swab it off there. there the other problem, of course, is that the contacts might be bent a little bit, so your connection from the batteries needs to be good. All right. So I bent the contacts here back. I made sure to get all the corrosion out from uh, using some white vinegar. Another thing to look out for, of course, you need the battery cover, otherwise you're <laughs> going to be using electrical tape. So if you're looking for something like this, make sure it has the battery cover. Yeah. I will say if it doesn't have it, it's not the end of the world we'll, because you can find replacement we'll, ones. We'll talk more. Market. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later for another unit here. Now, the other thing, of course, is the top. So as Ben mentioned, light must pass through here in order for it to work. So if you're looking at these on eBay or somewhere else, Sometimes these are brittle, sometimes they're cracked, and sometimes they're yellowed. You can retrobrite them to make them white again. Ben lucked out here. This one's in really good shape. Nothing physically wrong with the unit. And what I did is I just took a microfiber cloth, some simple dish detergent, and some water, and I completely wiped it off. So yeah. everything is prominent again. These were dark. You could barely even make out what it said on here when he gave it to me. And I cleaned it up very well, and it's in perfect working order again. Yeah, so a $5 investment off offer up turned into a really nice collection piece. I'm going to do a quick cut here, and I'm going to show uh, some of the tools and, and, and uh, materials that are used to fix one of these things up, because it's pretty easy, but uh, Matt has some expertise on that. So one sec. Real quick, let's just show some simple tools here. Matt, what, what's in this yellow bag right here? So right here, I have some anti-static tweezers. This is something you can pick up very cheap on Amazon less than ten dollars it's very helpful because you're dealing with very small screws in the back of these units here's the back of super mario brothers right here you can see how small those screws are if you're trying to get these out you don't want to lose them plus you don't want to apply any sort of uh, yeah. static electricity to it 
This is a very cheap pickup and well worth the price. And you can get on Amazon or something. That's where I got them, yeah. under $10. And you could use this, too, for other things as well. Like, we're talking about gaming watches today, but maybe you're into other kind of console repairs. I imagine this stuff would probably be useful for anything, really. Absolutely, any sort of electrical repair. What about the plastic one here? Next right here, this is a spudger tool set. So spudger? You, yes, spudger tool. <laughs> so these look like simple guitar picks. Yeah. And then you have other uh, things right uh, here like this. They're bigger. Some of these pointy ones right here. All right, what does a spudger do? So this is something you would <laughs> use to open up electronics. So if you're trying to open up an iPhone, I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but that's something you would use for that. This is what I had to use for this little guy right here. So this was a complete restore for me. This Mario Brothers, it's in the multi-screen series. So you can see... Two beautiful looking screens. They did not come to me yeah. looking like this at all. Might be a little hard to see in light. There it goes. Okay. So in this unit, um, you can see it's running right now. The batteries are in. And it's in two halves right here. So just this is a common tip. When you're looking at a multi-screen unit like this, you want to make sure, first of all, it has the battery cover. Yeah. This is something that's just very simple. And I, I mentioned this in the Popeye, but you want to make sure that it has a battery cover. This one actually clips in. You would use a mini screwdriver like this right, to let's, just pop let's, it out. Let's pivot to that real quick. So the mini screwdrivers you have right over here. Yeah. Another the, Amazon type thing. Amazon, probably around $10 or less. Um, a jeweler's screwdriver's kit is something you yeah. definitely want to have because these, again, are very small screws on this yeah. unit. Uh, similar to, like, maybe if you ever did eyeglasses. I guess it's just different sizes of bits. All right, so those are some of the tools you can need. And you, you can see none of them are too complicated and pretty cheap. And if you're going to do any kind of repairs, not just for game watches, but other sort of uh, systems, this stuff is good to have. Um, let's do a quick pause and we'll show some more stuff. Hey, Matt, so what do we have in this orange little pack here? This is going to be one of your more, more technical and advanced repairs. So, um, so this is a, obviously this is a soldering iron right here if you're not familiar with it. Uh, you would use something like this to create electronic connections. Um, obviously, soldering is something that takes some expertise and knowledge on, and we're not going to get into how to solder. Um, but if you are going to do any kind of electrical repair, it would be good to get some basics on that. And then over here, look, what, what are these items? So this is actually a solder remover right here. These are different soldering tips, some basic wire, a little wire right. guide stripper. Um, this is another anti-static uh, yeah. tweezer right there and I have some solder in here. So the reason why I brought this today is I have had to do some basic soldering, but for one thing on the Game yeah. & Watch, and that's the speaker. There's a very simple speaker in every single Game & Watch unit that has two leads on it, and one of them was disconnected on a unit I didn't bring today. The soldering kit was probably around $15 on Amazon, and it worked perfectly yeah. for me uh, to restore the speaker on Donkey Kong. For the average person, like doing basic soldering, like a soldering a wire back into place or making a button work again is usually pretty easy. Where things get kind of complicated where, is where it's like you're doing some of these sophisticated mods where you have to do like 20 solder points or something like that. So, uh, you know, proceed carefully if you're going to learn how to solder. But I would say for a lot of repairs, you don't necessarily need this stuff. So my advice with any kind of repairing is start basic and then work your way up. All right, let's do another quick pause. All right, Matt, what are we looking at here? So the reason I brought this manhole right here and I wanted to compare it to this Mario Brothers that I already restored is the screen. One of the things to look out for if you're trying to purchase a Game & Watch unit on eBay is the screen. Some things you can fix and others you can't. If you take a look at this unit, it's kind of hard to make out here in the light, but there's kind of a dark ring that you can see in the background of the perimeter of the screen itself. You can also see that the top part of the screen is very dirty. Some of these might be scratched, but again, don't worry. This is something that most people can replace very easily. This is not a very difficult repair. So we might even show some of that this morning here. You have six screws on the back of every single Game & Watch unit, at least in the multi-screen series, I'm sorry, in the uh, widescreen series. When you remove these screws, these two parts separate, the front part, including the bezel, and the back plate. Be careful when you're doing that though because there's a speaker lead there and you don't want to disconnect it. So just be very careful as sure. you separate it. But again, the reason I wanted to show this and distinguish this here is this Mario Brothers came with screens that look like this. And in just a few minutes, I was able to restore it and make it look essentially brand new inside. But another reason I wanted to pause on Mario here and Mario Brothers is that this part, again, you have two halves to this. 
this part, in order to access the left side here, you use your mini screwdriver set that we just showed you a minute ago. You remove these four screws, put them aside carefully, and once you do that, this side, this front part, pops out. That would allow you to gain access to the screen and replace the parts inside, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Now, this side, you might look at it and say, well, wait a minute, there's no screws on here. How do I get to that? That's where this comes into play, the spudger tool. Your spudgers. Yes, you use the spudgers here, and you basically try to maneuver it into there, and this part on the right side of this particular multi-screen series just simply pops off. Cool. Once you do that, then you can gain access to the screen elements. So another thing to look out for, of course, is the plate on the front, and I wanted to mention that in addition to all the other multi-screen series. So as you can see, the front plate on here, this metal plate, has a couple scratches on it, but it's not really in bad shape. Sometimes the units you're looking at might be missing the plate entirely. It's not impossible to find replacement uh, plates, but if you're looking to build a Game & Watch collection, I would advise you to look for ones with the plates already yeah. attached. Um, I have some pictures that Ben can yeah. include in the video of I, that. I mean, in general, uh, things like, if you just even looking at like manhole, and I'm not an expert on these, but things like buttons, these are replaceable items. You know, you can find these things. They're just rubber buttons. They're nothing that special. Maybe it might be a little bit tricky to find, but the reality is, is like the actual arts, you know, on this Zelda, Zelda, for example, I mean, this is a unique piece and it's not like they make a whole bunch of extras. Maybe you can find aftermarket stuff, but the original stuff isn't so easy to come by. All right, let's take another quick break. So I think for this part of the video, we're just going to highlight a few from Matt's collection. For the thumbnail of this video, I'm going to use just two really nice pictures of like all of his stuff, uh, just to give you a sense of what he has. But for this video, we're just going to do a few highlights. So this one he's holding first. Tell me about this one, Matt. It's, it says Parachute. So this is probably one of the oldest units in my collection here. Um, Where did you get it? Um, I got this on eBay. Um, pretty much everything it, I got was came it from eBay. I'm going to interrupt you a lot. Was it working when you got it? No. What no. was wrong with it? So this uh, parachute had the same screen issues that manhole had. So it needed um, a couple parts, which I haven't really gotten into yet. And uh, we'll show those off in a little bit because, again, that's just, not yeah, difficult. Why don't you just mention the parts real quick? We'll have to look. I'll show some. Um, I'll, like, show a little picture or something. What parts did this one need? So I'll, I'll just take a brief moment and describe how the screen works and how the images are produced on the screen. So what you see right here is not an LCD glass itself on top. This is a polarizing film, just like what's on sunglasses or eyeglasses. So that was scratched, it was beat up, and I replaced it. Underneath that, you have the actual LCD glass itself. That's very difficult to replace, so thankfully that was in okay shape. Um, but I just All cleaned right. that up. So I'm going to pause and ask another question. So if you're buying this, you're looking for bad polarizers, correct? You're not, you want the bottom piece to be intact, correct? That's right. You want the actual glass to be intact. So nothing cracked and you want to avoid anything with uh, what's known as screen bleed. I have a picture that I, that Ben can include in the video here of that. Yeah, I'll pop you, one up here. You cannot fix a screen with screen bleed. If the LCD has leaked right. itself, you cannot repair right. that. Well, we don't have to get into all the details because the reality is, is that if you're going to do these repairs, you'll probably want to get a little bit more information. But these are just sort of the things to look out for. All right, let's move to the next unit. So uh, why don't you show this one, this Mario. Uh, this is, let's see, Mario's Command fa Cement, Cement Factory. Factory. So this is a little bit later unit. This is in their widescreen series. I got this one recently. It works just fine. Where'd it you get it? Uh, I got it from eBay. It needs a little bit of work. Most of it's just cosmetic, as you can see here. Screen's a little beat up. I'll replace the polarizer on there. Um, the other part that I'll probably replace on both this and the manhole, where you see the ring on the back, there's a silver reflector that's on the back that goes behind the actual LCD glass itself. I brought some of those with me today. So to make that ring disappear, you just replace that part entirely. Okay. This one doesn't necessarily need that. It does need a new polarizer. It just needs to be cleaned up. And again, for that, simple microfiber cloth, very cheap on Amazon. Uh, I just use simple dish detergent with some water and just very carefully wipe it away. All right. You don't want to use rubbing alcohol on this. This is plastic. Rubbing alcohol is very bad for old plastics. Again, these are machines that... Or anywhere from 35 to 40 years old. Yeah. 
I would only advise using rub rubbing alcohol on the board itself. So this one works okay. Um, the buttons kind of stick a little bit. That's not a big deal. And that was the same problem I had with this parachute. The buttons yeah. didn't work. And I'll describe in a minute how uh, you would fix that. All right, let's go to the Mario Bros. So, so this is going to be... Um, this is the first Game & Watch that I actually used when I was a kid. So this unit right here is one of their newer units. It came out in 1988, which is yeah, right new, before the Game brand, Boy. Brand new from 1988, only 31 years old. Or, I'm sorry, 33 years old. A little more advanced than some of their older <laughs> units, like Parachute, in the sense that there is more music and a little bit of a um, you know, button controller. But I, I can see already that there's like a line through the screen. That's actually part of the screen itself. Oh. So another part I forgot to mention that's very important with all these is the inlay, the graphics themselves. You can see that on all of these units right here. All these graphics that you see, again, this is not a Game Boy we're talking about here. They're just right. simple LCD graphics that show up, and you can clean these. So as you carefully take these apart, use the microfiber cloth, uh, some dish detergent, and some water, and you can just wipe them down and make them look as good as new. However, if you see that any of these graphic inlays are missing, um, I would probably avoid buying something like that. But... Um, Parts are available on eBay. If you look around in the right places or the right Facebook group, people have these things and they're willing to sell them to you. All right, cool. Let's keep moving. Um, Blackjack. So this is probably my latest purchase in the multi-screen series. Uh, Nintendo made a lot of these. Uh, the reason I kind of like these a lot, this is the first gaming unit that I, uh, Game & Watch unit that I got. Not this personal one, but in this series. Um, so in this series, you have two screens again, kind of like Mario Brothers. So when you, where'd you get this, and what was wrong with it when you got it? Um, this one I got on eBay. There's actually nothing wrong with it at all. I got it for a really good price. I'd held out on this one. This one had the actual original battery cover for it. Um, the only thing I need to do, this is just cosmetic. Somebody had a sticker on here. You can use, uh, again, water, dish detergent, and a microfiber cloth. This will come right off, yeah, that's and you easy. can make it look as good as new. All right, cool. Another thing to point out, if you're a major collector, people are very uh, partial about having a unit that has the actual original serial number on there. Yeah. I don't care yeah, about that stuff. Yeah, me too. I don't go for that. those things. I go for the cheap stuff. But this one, as you can see, yeah. has that on there. So, again, the screens on these work in a similar manner as the other units that we've looked at here this morning. You have a graphical inlay where it would display the cards here. You have uh, polarizing film that's on the top, which was in good shape, did not need to be replaced. It has the same silver reflector that goes behind the actual glass LCD itself. And to open these, pretty simple. More simple than yeah. the Mario Brothers. Five screws in the back. Set them off to the side. Once you remove those five screws on the back, you open up the unit. You very carefully remove this bottom portion yeah. here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know it. So you remove the bottom portion, you replace the screen, and then you spudger the top. Am I am I getting it? You don't necessarily have to do that, but that oh. would probably help if the unit is stuck. Well, there you go. So um, what you see in between here, um, I forgot That's to mention, it's so very ribbon. important. Exactly. You have a ribbon cable. Yeah. This is what's transmitting data between the yeah. board on the lower screen to produce the images on the and, upper screen. I, I'm going to interrupt again. I mean, ultimately, this is very similar to how a DS is designed. I mean, obviously, a DS is much more sophisticated, but... I mean, that's how the two mo monitors connect. I mean, that you could see a lot of inspiration they had from the DS from a lot of these early Game & Watches. That's exactly right. So another thing to look out for, if you're looking at a multi-screen unit, make sure that this ribbon cable isn't cut, because if it's cut, you're, you're not going to have any images yeah. on the top screen. Replacing a ribbon cable is not impossible. I've done it many times. Um, it's not a very advanced repair. Finding the ribbon cable might be the challenge. All right, cool. Let's keep moving. Um, Zelda. The reason no, I, the people will be interested in Zelda. <laughs> now, uh, everybody who is into Game and Watch and Nintendo knows that Nintendo is about to release a 35th anniversary edition of Zelda for the Game and Watch. Yep, that I pre-ordered it, and so did I. In fact, I I pre-ordered two of them: one to open and one to keep sealed. Crazy. So <laughs> well, I did the same thing with Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. So the reason I brought this today is this one actually came out right before the Game Boy, 1989. Wow. Even I didn't know it existed until I got into Game & Watch collecting. So I believe this is the last in their multi-screen series, but Nintendo actually made a Zelda Game & Watch game. And weirdly enough, so it has swords for swashbuckling, uh, like pirate swords, because Link's a pirate, apparently. And... Some gargoyle is here too. So basically, for some reason, they used 
I, uh, I don't quite understand where uh, some of this art came from, but yeah, there it is. Uh, it is a pretty looking unit though. I do love the colors. I like about all these units, how nice and clean they look and just the overall aesthetic. Definitely a good shelf worthy thing. I mean, obviously these games are not sophisticated by today's standards. You're not gonna be sitting here playing these games for hours and hours and hours, but um, they are pretty neat. Uh, Matt, when you got this one, was this another eBay purchase? Uh, actually, no. Um, so what I did when I first started to get into Game & Watch collecting was I joined a couple Facebook groups. And when you join a Facebook group for Game & Watch, there's a couple out there, maybe Ben can link them in the comments or at least mention them. Um, people post their personal Game & Watch units for sale. So there was a seller, um, when I actually misspoke when I said I got this from eBay, this came in the lot with Parachute. Cool. Um, so the guy was listing Parachute and a Donkey Kong Jr. game I didn't bring with me this morning. Um, I asked him, hey, by the way, I'm just starting my collection here. Do you happen to have anything else? And he said, well, it turns out I have about six other Game & Watch units in the multi-screen series that I'd be willing to sell to you. So I worked out a deal with him and got eight units, including this Zelda right here. Uh, the reason I brought this today, this is probably one of the more rare units out there. Yeah, this certainly one's gonna one cost of the more desirable a ones. I mean, people just want Zelda stuff. If it's complete and it's not missing anything, like sometimes sure. this metal badge right here, or really on any of these multi-screen units could be missing. Um, maybe the battery cover is missing. I'd like to note, this is not an original Zelda yeah. battery cover. It's um, a 3D printer or something? No, this actually came from another game. Oh, okay. This came from a Popeye game, ah. but the color matches so, and it fits works, so yeah. good enough and I don't have Popeye right. so this will work for me. So speaking of the ones that are new, this is the new one right here. I've got one of these myself. We don't need to belabor too much uh, about this but it is nice and you can see the new ones really do mimic the old style of the system. And whether it's worth the, what is it, 50 bucks that they're asking, that's uh, debatable. Uh, but it is a nice little uh, novelty unit. And you can see they really were true to say what, um, you know, what the original, uh, here's a Super Mario Brothers here, what it looks like. Obviously they play differently, but that's the new one. So we'll keep going. Uh, if I could turn that off. Uh, how about uh, these two? These are a little bit more unique and then we'll wrap up. So the last two I brought here are some of the only games I have in box. So if you're looking for a Game & Watch unit, most of the ones that you see posted on eBay are going to be loose. If you're a hardcore collector, if you're looking for something with a manual or complete in box, they are out there, but they will cost you a pretty penny. I got really good deals on these. So this right here is a reissue from about uh, somewhere between 2009 to 2011 of the first Game & Watch that was ever made. So Ball was the first Game & Watch that ever right. came out in 1980. So let me, I'm going to interrupt. So this is sort of, um, this is a re-release. So it's not an original unit like Ball, but it plays like Ball would on the original Game & Watch Ball would. It's a replica, in other words. Exactly. Same, you know, aspect ratio, same size and all that, yeah. except instead of um, bat watch batteries, there's it's a lithium-ion yeah, battery in there. Something that's going to last forever, basically. So this one I did get complete in box. This one yeah. didn't run me too much. Yeah. This is the North American release. You can possibly pick up the Japanese release right. a little bit cheaper. Now let's talk about Donkey Kong Hockey, something that everybody knows Donkey Kong for. If there's one thing we know about Donkey Kong is that he's really into hockey. So this <sighs> is my first and only unit so far that is uh, NOS or new old stock. New old stock is obviously going to cost you an, uh, a bit. Um, so this unit came out a long time ago. The manufacturing date is 1984. But this unit is brand new. It's never been played before. The screen's in beautiful shape. Came right, with so two let's, manuals. Let's ruin it right now. Let's ruin saying. it, exactly. Yeah. The box itself's a little beat up, but that's okay. The manuals here are essentially untouched. I believe this one came from Canada, which is why there's both an English and French. Uh, set of the instruction. Exactly. So this unit, um, I'll just open You're it up. You're saying the Canadian people like hockey? I think uh, this is well, probably. I mean, maybe this is specifically for a Canadian market. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, uh, it I definitely came out in the United States. But this is important yeah. to note here because this series, the Versus series, the Micro Versus system, there was only about three or four games that came out in this series: Donkey Kong Hockey, Donkey Kong Three, and actually uh, Punch Out or Boxing. It's, it's very novel too, how the little wires come for the controllers and things like that. It just sticks out. That's it's just right. a neat and unique item, so really cool. I'm glad you brought this one over. So this one, as you can see, has actual controllers attached to the unit. Two people can play it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to note with this unit and why this is important. So 
with this series right here, the widescreen series, the multi-screen series, it's easy to get parts to fix the screen. If you're looking at a Versus uh, system series with a messed up screen, I would most likely avoid it. The screen right here is very difficult to replace. Um, polarizers and silver reflectors are more difficult to come by. You can find them, but again, if you're looking at a Versus system series, try to find one that's completely intact. It doesn't need to be complete in box. Certainly they'll work okay, um, but I would look for ones that have screens that are in good shape. These other ones, you can work on them. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to cut here, and then we'll wrap it up. Matt, thanks so much for going through all this stuff with me. It's really appreciated. Obviously, there's tons and tons of stuff to talk about with gaming watches. And if you like this stuff, uh, Matt has more stuff, so I could go to his place and probably show off more of his collection. But let's wrap up this video for now. Matt's digging through this bag to pull out these screen parts. And the reason we're looking at these screen parts right here is uh, these two units, the Mario Cement Factory and Manhole, kind of need a little work. And so uh, these are some screen components he ordered off the internet for us to do the work. I don't think we're going to do it in this video. Uh, but if you guys are interested in me may, me or Matt maybe doing a repair on one of these units, let me know. Please put it in the comments. And then for maybe a future video, we'll actually do a repair on camera uh, just to show how uh, manageable it is for the average person. Matt, you have anything to say? Just briefly here. This is an original polarizing film that came out of a Game yeah, & Watch unit. It's going to be hard to see, but you can kind of see it in the contrast. This is what I was describing that goes on the top of the screen here. Gotcha. So right underneath the screen, or actually what you're touching right here, yeah, is this polarizing film. This is what allows you to see the images on the LCD itself. Mm -hmm. So when I pulled out the original, you could see it was a little dirty, but I set it aside because this is a brand new one. Yeah. You can get these on, um, sorry, on eBay. Uh, you can get them in bundles, pretty cheap. Um, this right here is also very important. This is the silver reflector. So what I intend to do for this manhole is the same thing I did in a lot of other units. The dark ring that you can see around here, maybe we'll include some pictures as well. You do away with that by replacing the actual silver reflector. This is a brand new silver reflector right here. Very easy repair. Just make sure if you are going to take it apart that you remember the proper order that everything goes in. Also, like to note, with these polarizers, the images will only display one way. If you put it in the wrong way, the image will be dark. You'll notice that when you turn it on. But you might have to take it apart and flip it just to gotcha. get it the way you want it. But that's not too difficult. And last but not least here, while I didn't bring my bomb sweeper unit, the reason I brought this today is because when I got my bomb sweeper unit, it was missing this left metal badge right here. Not that big of a deal. I know how to replace this if you can find the actual metal plate itself. But in the Facebook group, I asked if anybody had this replacement unit. This piece of plastic is just called a bezel, just like what's on a television. You can see a complete one on this Zelda right here. Nothing missing here. So these parts are out there. Uh, if you see something that's missing this right here, don't necessarily let that preclude, preclude you from getting a, a decent Game & Watch unit because when you take it apart and you're removing the screws back here, like I did on the Zelda when I uh, fixed the screens on here, you can just swap out the original bezel, which I did on the bomb sweeper, with a nice new looking one. All right, cool. All right, uh, now we'll wrap it up. So that's it, I hope you found this interesting. Obviously it's a different type of video for me. Uh, I just thought Matt's Game Watches are really interesting units. Obviously they come from a different time of video games. This is you know, really uh, just like sort of, even pre the Tiger Electronics uh, LCD handles, or maybe around that time, uh, Nintendo is really putting out these interesting units and you can repair them. You could still find them. They can be a little pricey, but they're fun to collect. And, you know, maybe I'll get into it. If you guys want to see me or Matt repair one, uh, let me know. I need some feedback on this video. Hit the like button. Let me know if you found this interesting. Let me know if you want to see this repair happen and we'll make it happen. Uh, that's it. Again, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, stay safe out there. Get the vaccine if you haven't yet. And take care. Bye-bye.